And we're live. Uh, welcome, everybody, to our live workshop, workshop session on what should internal comms be measuring. Uh, not going to lie, me and Brad were both kind of blown away by the response from the community on this one. I already see well over 100 people hopping in. One thing that we do like to do with these sessions at the beginning is kind of get a feel from where all you guys or from where you guys are calling in. So you see on the right hand side you have a little questions tab. If you could go ahead and type in there where you're calling in from, it would be really interesting to see see uh, where our community is calling in from today. Um, I know from a fact, like looking at the looking at the statistics that we had. A, Truly global reach, and I see the I see the response starting to come in. Uh, it's amazing. I see Lithuania, Belgium, Atlanta, Toronto, Kuala Lumpur. It's midnight in Kuala Lumpur, uh, Glasgow, Australia, UK. All right, we have it. We have a good. We have a good. What a cover. global turnout for this! I mean, it was pretty amazing when the uh, signups were coming in to see the number of people who have an interest in internal communications and metrics and uh, are are willing to devote an hour to this uh, fun topic, Alex. Oh yes, oh yeah, and and I, I think um, you know, kind of when we were designing this session with Brad, you know, we had I'm, we must have had what like at least three, four, five, six hours of of of. Uh, virtual meetings to kind of nail down the subject. So hopefully we can condense everything into one hour. Well, and I think the challenge is how do you take something that a lot of people have never tackled, hit the highlights, and try to cover it all in an hour's time. So we'll we'll give it a, a run today and give it a good shot. All right. Um, yeah. So today, of course, it's going to be me, myself, Alex, product marketing manager here at Smart speaking, and I'm joined by the the amazing Brad Whitworth. Uh, Brad, of course, you have a long career. What was it? Over forty years you've done in internal comms. Yeah, I have been busy at this for quite some time, and and love it. And the the more I learn, the more I want to keep practicing for maybe another forty if I'm lucky. And 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 you're calling in from from uh, California, correct? Surrounded Northern by wildfires. California. Yeah, wine country, about four or five miles from a fire that has been. Uh, <clears throat> Taking a little bit of attention away from the, the presentation today, but uh, we're safe and have not had to evacuate and uh, uh, knock wood. We'll keep it that way. <laughs> Hopefully, at least for the next 58 minutes or so. If, if, yep. if guys, guys, if Brad has to hop off, uh, it's it's because of an un, uh, unforeseen yeah. circumstance to the fires. Um, okay, but kind of if we get into the, the topic today, which is more uh, around internal communications measurement and, and what kind of internal comms departments should be looking at or what they could start looking at to, to improve their measurement. I'm not going to lie. Working on this, it was, you know, even though me, Brad, we're both kind of in the thick of it, it's, it's not an easy subject. It's like Brad said, it's something that so many people have kind of yet to tackle, kind of, uh, you know, maybe, maybe satisfied on looking, uh, uh, looking at kind of, uh, kind of output metrics like internet reads, et cetera. One thing that I kind of, and I posted this on LinkedIn um, a week ago, uh, I made the, made the statement of what do internal comms measurement and teenage sex have in common? Now, unfortunately, we're not here to talk about, uh, well, fortunately, we're not here to talk about teenage sex today. Uh, we're actually here to talk about how everyone is talking about internal comms measurement, but they're not yet necessarily doing it. And in fact, more than half of uh, I see pra practitioners, according to IBC, still don't measure their comms. And hopefully... Well, I think there's a historic yeah. reason for that, too. I mean, if you go back and look at job descriptions for internal communications people from, I would say, a decade ago even, there was nothing about measurement and evaluation or very, very little. It's also a topic that was not one that most communications people who tend to be versed in uh, you know, communications, English, journalism, mass comm, kind of, they didn't have right. to take a lot of classes in math, science, stats, anything else. So it was never a part of the job. And uh, I think we sort of learned how to bolt it on and come to it after the fact, but it's still not a natural act, not integral to what it is that we normally do. Right. And hopefully what we can do here today is start kind of giving people some ideas on what, what type of things you can begin to measure. And again, this is not going to be 
a, a, you know, a catch all, but hopefully it will give you some ideas on where to yeah, start. Yeah, and some real world examples. I've, I went back into the files and pulled some things that will show that uh, communications survey work, for example, doesn't have to be extensive, doesn't have to be expensive, and that you are not in this by yourself. Right, exactly. So, um, but like Brett said, we're going to have some real world examples and then some kind of hypothetical workshop examples. And for the workshop portion, we're going to be assuming the role of the internal communications department at Acme Corporation. Now, Acme in this scenario has two primary strategic business goals that we're going to look to tackle with internal communications. And these are increasing employee alignment around company strategy, as well as retaining top talent at Acme Corp. Now, the first part is something that many IC departments deal with. The kind of uh, employee alignment around strategy, of course, is a big topic for IC. The second part, talent retention, is not something that necessarily comes up as a internal comms, something that internal comms can influence. But hopefully today we can show that you actually can influence it. Well, I think these two examples are also great ways of thinking about what is it that we want to measure? What are we charged with doing? And why do we communicate in the first place? And I, I remember years ago hearing, why do you communicate to an internal audience? One is to change minds. So the first one is the what were people thinking? What are they thinking now? How are they aligned around it? The other is to change um, sort of behaviors, outcomes, and and this one of the you know I'm choosing to stay at and you know changing the numbers on things is a measure of that. Um, other people have described it as what we as communications people often do is measure output which is the, the stuff that we produce and how it was uh, consumed. We measure mm -hmm. outtakes, which is what is it that people get out of the what it is that we're communicating. And the third part is the outcomes, which is what are the business manifestations of all of this stuff. And some people would say, you need to do only outcome. I would say you probably need to do all three at different times in your communications programs. Exactly. It's more of kind of a holistic view, and that's hopefully exactly. something uh, we can promote today. But we have 200 people online. We only have 53 minutes left. I was, you know, telling Brad that hopefully we can get through this all, uh, but we're going to do our best. So let's go ahead and start off with that first strategic business goal we were talking about. So increasing employee alignment around company strategy. Now, before we get into an example of of how Acme is approaching this. Um, Brad, I know you've done this uh, in a previous, a previous role, previous life. Yeah, well, I think uh, what I pulled out of a, a file was something that I had done that was um, a, an example. I, I can, you know, from this example, pull a lot of different points to make. But one is you really need to know, you know, how were you doing at a certain point in time? And then how have you moved the needle? So the first thing is to establish a baseline. In this survey, which was done for a business unit within Cisco a few years ago, we wanted to find out, did people really understand the role that this strategic alliances team played? And so what we did is we went out and asked five different audiences, the same three questions. And the three questions are there. The left-hand column shows in varying degrees of blue, gray, and red, their responses. The blue, if you really zoomed in, were all smiley faces, and the red were sort of frowny faces, and the grays were sort of neutral. And what we did was we did a measure at the front end of the campaign, and then we did a measure, it was like six months, eight months later, on the right-hand side, you'll see the final results. And the best part about this, one is it's data visualization, but you see that the number of blue faces from the dark blue, which is the extremely happy, to the medium blue, um, normal happy, increased tremendously and the number of gray and red faces disappeared completely. So uh, I think the, the key takeaways, one was um, I didn't have to waste a lot of time asking demographic questions in this. I said, I'm going to ask you three questions. What I did was I sent different discrete sections of the audience off to three or five identical surveys. So I had a control group, I had a test group, I had another test group, and they all answered it. And I had sort of pre-chosen which groups were I gonna look at. So um, audience segmentation is important thing. This was a group of more senior leaders, not the senior most leaders at Cisco, but a deck down below that. And then 
you know, can we see over time their change in, and this would be the outtakes part of it. It was not business outcomes because they weren't asked to do anything, but it was much, much more than did they read the stuff that we presented. And we, we had a multi-prong campaign going. And I think that's part of what we wanna do is we're gonna talk about, you've got tactics, you've got implementation plans. How do you come up and sort of summarize and bring all those things together with metrics that matter? Exactly. And I think something you said just now, and, and it's going to be so crucial in any kind of measurement, not even just internal communication measurement, but any type of measurement, is know your baseline. Know where you're starting from, because only if you know where you're starting from, is that's the only way you'll ever know if you made a difference, if you move the needle. So always uh, set a baseline. Exactly. Okay. So, so if we can... We, I was going to say acne. I, yep. I, I, this shows my love for uh, Roadrunner cartoons and Coyote. <laughs> there always was something being shipped to them from Acne Corporation. So uh, yes, that's that's where the name comes from. Fun fact. Um, all right, but if we take about uh, take a step back and we think about what we are doing currently at Acne, so a hypothetical situation um, here at Acne. Uh, these are some strategy alignment campaigns that you guys may already be running in your internal communications. If you're not, here's a good place to start. Something to think about when you're kind of planning your your strategy. Well, uh, strategic yeah, initiatives. And I mean, this is not necessarily meant to be you know the right answer. It, it might be right for Acme at a particular point in time, mm -hmm. and it also shows a little bit of the breadth of kinds of things that you might be able to do. From some that have some short-term measurement impact to some things that are probably a little bit longer in terms of their. Uh, um, impact on the organization and it also shows that you can do all sorts of things from you know video to um, news briefs and stories and you can even get into things like gamification can you find right. a way to do sort of quiz and engage in your employees in more of a two-way communication strategy as opposed to just a one-way here's the stuff read it and react exactly exactly um so kind of when we thought about how ACME would proceed to kind of measure and, and, and kind of figure out if their campaigns are working or where to start improving or set a baseline and how yep. to improve that. Uh, again, it all begins with starting that base, uh, starting with that baseline, establishing it, how aligned or misaligned uh, are the employees at this point in time? Uh, and how, and kind of taking it further than that, how different employee segments are engaging with strategic communications, because of course, you might have one group uh, or one geography that is very engaged, one that's not engaged at all. So how do you figure out that, you know, what works for each each region? And to kind of build on that, what types of communications do they prefer? Are they the two way, uh, like, like the strategy quizzes that Brad was talking about? Are they leadership videos or some kind of strategic, other strategic initiatives? At the end of the day, the idea is to figure out what works for, for each segment and how to kind of find those outliers and set achievable improvement goals there. Brad, I know this is something you were talking about a lot about, you know, how improvement goals need to be achievable. Um, and that's something yeah. that you've I, done. Yeah. Well, I think anytime, I, I, as I say, one of the little suggestions might be that if you haven't had an opportunity to um, practice some of this measurement, some of the metrics, look at awards programs in the communications industry. Very familiar with IABC's Gold Quill and Silver Quill Awards programs, but just about any ilk these days of awards programs ask you, what were your goals when you started the campaign and where did you end up? How do you measure your success? So it's, it's a discipline that all of us need to get into a little bit more. And what we've got here in these five points really is, in a sense, a process that one could follow no matter what it is that you're trying to measure. A lot of it just requires you to sit down and think, you know, what is it that we're trying to do? I also would suggest that one is you should be measuring all along and you probably are. There are some things that are going on, whether it's uh, employee engagement surveys or something that HR is running, something that you're doing on a regular basis. You should have some key performance indicator questions that you're asking with uh, all along so you don't have to, oh, all of a sudden we're gonna start measuring. The other one that I've heard a lot of people say, and especially now that we're going through some really um, challenging times for organizations of all sorts with the uh, pandemic and you know, around here wildfires, is, oh, we can't measure now. We can't ask people to take a survey because they're overtapped and, and the results will be really poor. 
And I would counter that that's a perfect time to establish some baselines because in some ways one could hope that things would only go up from some of this. So, you know, you should be measuring all along mm -hmm. some things. And then we're going to talk about not only measuring around a campaign, sort of a pre-test and a post-test of things, but you also need to be measuring over time some longevity to see whether if after you ran this campaign and things went up, what happened six months, 12 months, a year later, you know, was, was it dropping off? Was it the same or was it actually improving? Right, exactly. Um, so kind of then I want to walk you guys through an example of how Acme Corporation would approach this type of process. Yeah, and I, I love the idea of becoming, one is communications measurement should become integral to the way we go about doing communications. The other part is that the tools that we use to communicate ought to have metrics built in. Um, instead of it being a bolt on, oh, I've got to now go off and do a survey monkey kind of a survey that becomes sort of an afterthought or a, an added chore, it's the tools that you use. I, I wish I had grown up with tools that were giving me, in a sense, real-time measurement for the efforts that I was providing. And what you're actually going to see is a sneak preview of something that uh, Alex and the team at SMARP have been working on um, for quite some time. And this is like a sneak preview of... Um, uh, <laughs> stay tuned to this channel because there's some really important fun news coming. Right. Th thanks, Brad. So like Brad alluded to, we are kind of on the on the verge of a very major, a major product and, and feature release here at SMARP. And today you guys are going to be the first to kind of see it uh, in action. Now, I want to stress that this is just one approach to to um, to doing internal communications measurement, but hopefully this gives you an idea of, you know, regardless of what platform you're using, gives you an idea on how to integrate data into your communications measurement process. Like uh, Saraswati here had a question on, you know, you're interested in knowing how to measure the effectiveness of internal newsletters. Well, you need to build in those measurement, you know, measurement pieces into your newsletter. So you don't just know if somebody's opening the newsletter, you need to also be able to know what piece of information on that newsletter do they consume and what is the action that they take after that. So it's going way beyond your standard kind of read metric and going more into what what happened and what can we do to change uh, change a behavior. Um, well, what I do like is the uh, curiosity. <clears throat> um, that's what we all have to have is to sort of build our curiosity in that whole metrics, measurement, statistics world so that we're asking the kinds of questions that often senior leaders or certainly our bosses are asking or should be asking of us. Right, exactly. So let's take a look at what ACME would be looking at uh, in terms of measuring their, their stra strategic alignment campaign in the new and soon to be released, the official release date is going to be September 1st. So stay tuned. Uh, you're going to get a sneak peek today But how they would be measuring in the new SMART Workforce Insights Analytics platform. So when you land on Workforce Insights, again, the, the, the tool you may be using or that other companies may be using might differ, but you probably have some of these metrics available. Now, one thing that's really important here, and I can't stress this enough, and it goes back to what we were talking about measuring your, your newsletters as well, is that you need to be very good in order to measure you know, anything at all, you need to be very good at tagging your different communications campaigns because that helps you kind of dig into the data and understand exactly which communications are working and which aren't. So now, in Acme situation, they are in the fortunate situation where they actually tagged all of their communications and all their strategic communications under one campaign called their strategy campaign. So now when we're kind of digging into that strategy campaign, we can start understanding specifically around that campaign that what's working. Now, if you remember, the, the goal here was to increase alignment and increase kind of engage, engagement around those kind of pieces of strategy, uh, strategy information. What the great thing about Workforce Insights and hopefully, you know, a, a vast majority of other analytics platforms is that you can kind of dig down and look into 
how the engagement breaks down by not only by campaign, but by different regions as well. So in Workforce Insights, you have a engagement meter, which you start dig that, digging down into. Now, what Acme notices here is that there's a huge discrepancy around engagement with strategic. Remember, we're looking at strategic alignment materials. We can tell that the US region is not engaging with these pieces of, pieces of content. And that's a huge issue. That's causing misalignment in the US region, which is going to cause strategic business issues. But you can take it one step further from there. Remember, we had our four different strat strategic alignment materials and communications campaigns. We can actually go even deeper and understand how each campaign is being engaged with. Now we know, looking at these graphs, that the US team primarily enjoys watching videos over the other pieces of strategic campaign. Brad, is that like, in your experience, are videos typically the most engaged with content types in, in, in organizations? If, do, if done properly, I would say. I mean, you know, there, there's a difference between a, a quick two minute, I'll call it a short form video that engages people, that brings people up to speed, that gives them information in a snap, versus the, oh, we've posted the 90 minute recorded town hall meeting, you should go and watch it. Um, I actually thought uh, a, a brilliant tactic that somebody did was if you do have a 90 minute thing, find some way to chop it up into small consumable bite sized pieces and attach sort of like, you know, topics and, and parse it out um, in in little chunks that are much more consumable than that big thing. But um, yeah, I would say that um, we're all learning as communications people that photos are more attractive in terms of readership than just text alone. And videos, again, done properly, can be even more engaging than a still photo. We're, and the good part is we've got the bandwidth these days and the tools to be able to allow us to deliver all of these things and measure their results where before it was our focus was always on the oh we need to write that body of copy that big chunk of prose get it perfect get it approved by the lawyers and every regulatory person in the organization before we send out this thing that nobody's going to end up reading anyway so video has tremendous impact and you know it can be short sweet to the point and very very measurable exactly and I think and there's another key, you know, key takeaway here, which is you shouldn't only be evaluating and measuring how a certain campaign, for example, strategic alignment campaign, how that campaign is working, but you should be also measuring how each type of content is working. Are the videos working? Are, is the written form working? Are images working? What is it that makes your employees tick and what makes them engage with your communications? that starts and, giving you the insights. And I think the other key point that you're making too is that it's not all employees, because that's always historically been one of our challenges is that our audience tends to be sort of all employees. But the reality is that different groups of people, different individuals consume information in very, very different ways, whether it's on a geographic basis, it's a job basis, it has something to do with length of service, it has something to do with the where you sit in the organization. Um, we need to start asking questions about the can we do the one size fits all? How do you drill down? How do you deliver things to a particular subset um, in a way that engages most effectively with them? Mm -hmm. And we've got the we've got ways to measure it now. Exactly, exactly. So it's all about kind of like you said, your your segmentation, your tagging, your your the ability to kind of measure all that and neatly get actionable insights that actually help you help you move the needle. Um, so kind of moving past this graph, if kind of ACME were to get to this point, they would clearly see that they have an issue with the U.S. team and that they and they clearly have an insight from which they can build on that the videos seem to be working best for the U.S. team. So, again, we talk about establishing a baseline. We saw that the U.S. group or team was engaging with strategy communications at 39%. That's not great, that's too low. We want to set an achievable goal, which is to raise uh, engagement around those communications to 65% in three months. 
and the actionable insight, the takeaway, the strategy that you're going to kind of drive that engagement forward is to focus on leadership videos for that specific region. And, and if here, you do, yeah, okay, if you do put those going. smart goals together, which are you know specific and measurable and actionable and time bound and relatable, um, you you almost have some built in metrics for the thing. So I mean, that's the beauty of looking at your goals as a business goal of some sort as well. So that whole notion of um, increasing um, engagement around things. Yep. There's a great question that came in. Uh, Ray was asking, do you have to be a statistician to be able to do this? And my quick answer is, no, you really don't. You have to have an intellectual curiosity. I always found, I mean, I have taken a class in stats and I've learned how to use terms like, you know, understanding what confidence levels are and correlation factors, the difference between correlation and causality and how to do random sampling and how to put together questions. But more important is the teaming up with somebody who's got that innate set of skills. Um, even if you don't have it yourself, you need to understand the, what it's being, what's done. I've got a friend who is a winemaker here and, um, and has taken all these classes and all the things you have to measure. And I asked him, do you actually run all these tests? He goes, <laughs> um, no, I don't have to run all the tests myself. I send it out to the lab. They do the tests. I just need to know how to interpret the results. I think that's the more important part behind all of this stuff is, yeah, you need to know what kinds of questions to ask and how about digging into the information that may be at your fingertips and how to interpret it and put it into action. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I somehow knew when I saw that question coming from Ray, I figured that you were going to pick that up because that's something we've been talking about. Uh, talking about a lot as well. Um, I think one key thing here and one last thing that I want to mention about Workforce Insights before we move on is, again, we're talking about a goal, something that you want to measure against in the future as you move forward, as you implement the strategy of focusing on leadership videos for the specific region. Now, you're only going to know if you're kind of, if that strategy pays off if you kind of keep tabs on it. And one last thing that Workforce Insights is great at is it can kind of, you can program it to keep you up to date about those specific data points that you want. When you drill into something, into the nitty gritty, you can tell a platform to tell you whenever you hit a certain goal or a certain milestone. But again, this is regardless, uh, you know, any platform you're using, you're only going to ever know if you're kind of making progress against the goal, if you keep kind of following up and checking on it. Workforce Insights does a lot of that work for you, but that's not to say that you can't do can't do that work yourself as well. well. And we're back to the, you you need to befriend someone. Well, AI, in this instance, be the engine behind <laughs> what's going on in Insights can be that statistics friend who knows a little bit more about it, who's on top of it on a daily basis. And a great question coming in from Bruno is asking, mm -hmm. you know, what is it that you need to measure to be able to prove your value to senior leaders? Um, yep. I, I somewhat brushed by it in a, a flippant way, which is probably my style anyway, but you need to measure what matters. So do yep. you know what are the business issues that are keeping senior leaders awake at night? Um, if you don't know those, you need to probably go back and look at the corporate goals and the directions and the strategy and all the tactics and the, the objectives or whatever they happen to be called in your organization <laughs> and find ways that how does communications impact those sorts of things. And we'll get into it a little bit when we get to the uh, next yeah. example, which focuses on a business issue facing acne. But again, right. go back and, you know, if, if you don't understand what it is that's keeping your senior leaders awake at night, ask them. Don't exactly. Sorry. Exactly. I think, you know, uh, you know, Bruno, to your question, again, it's the, the strategic, strategic alignment is something that faces a bunch of IC departments. But I think in the next goal, we're going to show some uh, show a way to kind of measure against talent retention, which then is actually something that is a huge, of course, that's well documented, the amount of money that companies lose on talent retention. So that is always going to be a key strategic goal for, for organizations. So uh, it's it'll, we're going to show you how internal comms can start kind of playing yeah. into that. And, and while you're moving things forward, Corbin asked a great question about um, sort of survey response. You know, are people being out over surveyed? Do they, how do you get people to take surveys? And I would say um, one is you definitely need to be on top mm -hmm. of that just to sort of see 
you know, what your response rates are, are there audiences that aren't responding to things? But the other piece is that there are ways to do metrics that, and we've been talking a little bit about that with the, the insights side of things, um, in just in the measuring things in the background where it doesn't require people to take that action of actually going to the survey and filling it out and taking time from their busy day. So uh, I think your communications metrics have to include some that are both active um, and engaging, and also some that are running in the background all the time to be able to give you some stuff. So it's not just measuring um, business outcomes, it's also measuring some of these um, outputs that you're doing and also exactly. outtakes. Exactly, it's, it's not either or, it's, it's, it's all of the above, essentially. Um, guys, we're gonna move over to the, to the second business goal, but before I go on, I do want to, men I mentioned that we are releasing this feature uh, next week. And prior to the release, we are doing kind of some sneak previews for, for people that are interested to see how Workforce Insights could work for their organizations. So what I'm gonna do right now is you have a polls tab on your right-hand side as well. If you're interested uh, to kind of get a customized, dedicated preview of how this platform might work for your organization, feel free to just raise your hand uh, in the poll there and we'll we'll kind of follow up with you from yeah. there. Well, the other thing that um, I would say that uh, you've seen in both that Cisco example that I pulled out uh, mm -hmm. around strategic alliances and what you've got with insights is data visualization. You need yeah. to find a way to, once you've got the data, how do you present it? What does that dashboard look like? What are the graphs that are most important? How do you tell your story in pictures that are worth something. I mean, if a, if a picture is worth a thousand words, there's about a gazillion data points that you can boil down into a picture that's more meaningful than some giant spreadsheet that um, will befuddle people because they don't know where to look and what to look for and the trends. So uh, just as important exactly. as knowing what it is that you're measuring and how you can show that things are moving is how to present that information to people to say, and you know, here's my data, let me tell you all about it, and let me tell you the story behind the numbers. Exactly, exactly. I like what, what you said there about, you know, it, what, you know what, picture, what, what a picture is worth and what a piece of data is worth. So really data visualization, of course, comes into play here. But I think in the interest of time, let's go ahead and look at that second key business objective that was uh, kind of Plague, well, not plaguing, but uh, causing gray hair for, for Acme Corporation and the internal comms department. And here we're talking about retaining top talent. And this, of course, typically is thought of as a, you know, a talent acquisition, an HR initiative. It's not necessarily something that's really internal comms. Of course, internal comms plays a huge role in keeping your top talent. But how do you measure that? How do you figure out what you're doing, you know, which pieces of your communications are keeping people in house, or what you should be doing to keep people in house better. Yeah. Um, and and what we also did on this one is came up with sort of the what are some of the tactics that we would use in terms of yeah. a campaign to be able to get us there. So it could be everything from um, you know having long service employees doing uh, say videos about what they find engaging about the organization and why they stuck around and, and what they get out of it. So, you know, Acme is me kind of a video campaign to build up some sense of loyalty and sort of, uh, sort of compadre <laughs> aspect to things. You right. can do a little bit more intense job of, of showing um, internal mobility by sharing job opportunities. There's probably some careers thing and maybe there's a posting. Maybe that's also mm -hmm. the, you know, finding ways to just give some visibility to things that already exist. What about uh, getting employees to share their ideas on improving products and services and all sorts of things, sort of putting people to work, doing what it is they're doing, but also giving some visibility to it. And then uh, those are all maybe short-term campaigns that you're doing in the next two or three months that you could put together. But I think the other piece is maybe you've discovered through some of your metrics that um, is really something that's a longer aspect. It is um, my managerial communications is not really working the way it ought to be across the entire organization. What can I do? And that's not the kind of thing that you, one, alone can solve, or two, can do in a short-term period. So. 
Um, you know, I think the, the question is, how do you put together, you know, if you say, okay, it's managerial communications that we need to work on, what can you do to do it? And I've often said that, um, you know, I, I did a study a while ago, and we'll, we'll dive into a little bit of that, but um, there are three ways that one communicates in an organization. One is sort of through that managerial hierarchy, and we do things like cascading. We have um, meetings, all that sort of stuff. We do mass communication kinds of things with our channels and our videos and our emails and goodness knows what all else. And then there's also this non-formal network that communicates. And there are things like Worksite Insights that can get you into that non-formal network that exists to find out how it's working. But you need to, I think, make the most of all the channels that are available to you. And let's talk a little bit about this whole managerial communications effectiveness. Right. I think that something that you shared earlier, and I, I'm going to hop over to this this piece of study uh, or the study that you you had run prior. But it's really interesting to see just how big a role managerial communications play and supervisor communications play into overall job satisfaction and thus overall job retention. So, Yeah, this is something that I, I was exposed to when I was at HP, but a friend of mine at General Electric by a guy named Jim Harmon said, here's a study that we did at GE. And what we found was that the more effective the job a manager did in communicating with his team, the more satisfied that was the term in the past, employee satisfaction. One could probably could translate that into employee engagement. The more engaged the employees were across all aspects of their life. And what he was able to do is isolate five questions. I was able to replicate it with five identical questions that HP had in its uh, survey work. And based upon an employee's response to those five questions, you got put into one of six groups. If you had nothing nice to say about the way your boss communicated with you, you were put in with all the other people that had zero positive responses on the five questions. Then the one out of five, the two out of five, the three out of five, the four out of five. And what you see in this graph is the red line at the very bottom are the people who are least satisfied with the way their boss has communicated with them. And what we're able to do with regression analysis is determine that the these set of five questions were the best determinant of how people respond across everything. So key was this managerial supervisory communications effectiveness. So the red are the least satisfied folk and the purple are the most satisfied folk. And you can see it there in that fourth column as sort of the driving factor um, in determining everything. But what you see across the sort of horizontal aspect of things is that you've got perfect positive correlation that this set of five questions determines how satisfied people were with their pay, with their benefits, with their thought of the company image, with their training opportunities. So it really was an eye opener. And when I would share this with um, an HP managerial audience and you tell them, you know, part of your job as a manager is communicating with your team. They go, yeah, yeah, I understand that. But when you show them the raw data this way and say, here is why it's really critical that you have regular staff meetings, that you share information that's passed along, that you, you know, do, and it, it depends on the organization, but you know, skip level meetings. Or it, this is why you're doing this stuff. Or at HP, we had a thing called management by wandering around. And some people go, oh, I don't have time to do that. Here is proof positive of the why it is that you need to go about doing things because through this data analysis that we did. And I will also admit, I didn't do it. I went to the person in HR who did this survey on a regular basis and said, hey, the people at GE were able to pull this out and show this. We've got similar questions. Could we go back and look at our data? And the intellectual curiosity that this person had of uh, producing a report on something that was above and beyond what they normally would do in their job, but that was also sort of fascinating to them to say, ooh, I wonder if that's also true at our place. So I think Again, I didn't have to do the data analysis. I just had to have the questions in mind and also befriend someone who had access to and manipulated this. And this was their day-to-day -day job. So they were a lot more effective at this. I didn't have to go out and do my own survey work because the data already existed somewhere in the organization. And I think that's the other piece that I would make in something like what we're looking at too, in terms of um, retaining top talent, uh, you've probably got some amazing data out there. So for example, what are the voluntary turnover rates in your organization? Go to HR and find the person mm -hmm. who produces that report that said, we're losing this many people. 
Um, there's probably stuff like on glass door in the outside world where people who have left the organization are giving satisfaction levels of, of working at your, you know, your organization. Go out and find those data points and you can on glass door go back and measure that in past. You can go back and see what was it six months ago, what was it a year ago, and how does it compare today? So go start putting your thinking cap on where can I get the data that's getting me at some of this stuff. Okay, and I think that's a really a really key point there that you made is that internal communications often is kind of we think of, of ourselves as kind of being siloed to our own bucket of data, but it's okay to kind of venture outside, you know, what you have in your comms tool, or what you have in your kind of statistics or, or, or data package, and kind of go out, talk to HR. What is our turnover rate? Look at Glassdoor. What is our what are our you know satisfaction ratings on Glassdoor? It's totally fine to kind of expand your horizons a little and incorporate those external data sources into your reporting. Well, totally and the fine. other one is you have to become confident with your data too. I remember sometimes talking to senior managers that well, I found da 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 da, and you go, show me your data. You know, um, here is the data that I've got, and oftentimes people are. You know, uh, I heard this and I saw that, and and it's it's they haven't really tied it together. You have to be able to know the stuff and be able to prove that the numbers that you've got are probably more powerful, more complete than their numbers, if they even have numbers. Oftentimes, um, people are are working off of hunches. So, uh, I think yeah. as communications people, we need to be a whole much more comfortable in this world and stand up for the stuff that we've done. But that also means that we need to be competent enough and versant enough in this field to be able to have the competence to stand up. <laughs> the other thing I found is when I made this presentation, before I went and talked to a lot of HP audiences, I also talked to a lot of IABC audiences about what it is that we've done. And they asked me some really great questions that in some ways um, I had to learn the answers to those because then uh, that was my test group before I would go in front of the real group at HP. I knew what a lot of the questions were going to be about the data and what the, um, you know, the, the salient points were and what the, uh, you know, how come kinds of questions. I knew how to answer them. Yeah. 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 I, I, I mean, again, I, I know we could, we could talk about this. This study alone would, would be a whole, a whole live session on its own, a whole workshop. But I think, you know, anybody that's interested in learning about this, Brad obviously does a lot of consulting work for us as SMARP as well. Feel free to, to reach out to him. And I've point. actually written on this topic. You probably Google it and find it uh, somewhere. So uh, in is, fact, I, I would say what I was, this is that intellectual curiosity at work. This proved that a manager was effective in impacting an employee's satisfaction levels. I went a step beyond to be able to prove that not only was it impacting their sort of satisfaction engagement, it also was a direct driver of that employee's performance level. So, yeah. you know, is communications tied to performance? We were able to prove it. Yeah. All right, I think uh, I wanted to run through one example here still. I mean, again, the, the managerial and uh, the managerial communications and the ability for an employee to feel satisfied at their work and their, you know, their role is so important in understanding, you know, and like starting to build towards lower, I mean, lower voluntary turnover rates, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, but I also wanted to kind of talk about once you kind of, you have this, you, you've, you've started your kind of, uh, managerial communications programs, they are communicating. Now you want to understand what's going on with the business. Again, establishing your baseline. What is our, what is our retention? One way, of course, which we just talked about was that you can go to HR, talk to them, ask them about how, what is our turnover rate? How are we doing right now? But with the right metrics and right tools, right processes, right campaigns and tagging in place, you can actually start figuring that out Again, when you integrate, when you build measurement as an integral process in your communications campaigns, again, that's, I think, a key takeaway for everybody for this session is just having measurement as an integral part of your communications process. Uh, it makes things so much easier down the road. And we will look at one more example here for ACME in Workforce Insights, just in case you guys didn't get enough of it yet. Um, but here we're talking about a bit of a different data set. We're talking, uh, we're, now we're looking at a few different campaigns we have. I know the screen is probably pretty small. Hopefully you can make it out. 
there are four key campaigns here, offboarding, internal mobility, strategy, and growth. Now, as a communicator, I want to understand what's, uh, you know, wh where we have, it, because retaining top talent at the company is one of our key, our key strategic business goals. I want to understand, first of all, where we have retention issues. So I can start looking into the offboarding campaign, which includes stuff like employee farewells, all the materials they need there to successfully transition outside of the company. One thing that Workforce Insights does, which is really cool, Brad already alluded to it, is incorporate artificial intelligence and suggest to you what kind of data you should be looking at. So now here I see there are 121 posts in the offboarding campaign. Now when I click into that and I ask AI to tell me what I should be looking at, it will actually tell me that finance is the majority driver of those offboarding posts, that offboarding content, that campaign. So we can start telling that, okay, it looks like the finance team is having a tough time, you know, we're having a tough time retaining uh, people in our finance team. But now we kind of want to start understanding, okay, what might be causing this? What can we do to kind of course correct here? And we can hop back out and one of the campaigns that ACME is running is on internal mobility. So of course, providing new opportunities, new jobs for for employees to kind of progress in their career within the company. Now, if we dig into that internal mobility campaign, we see there are 197 posts. And when we then use AI again to suggest what we should be looking at, it starts to paint a picture. So we can tell that, that while other teams are getting a fair amount of internal mobility posts and a fair amount of new job opportunities for them to progress in their career, we can tell that finance is not getting you know, the same amount of attention. And that becomes apparent when you look at these graphs side by side and you start to understand that while finance has the highest number of people leaving, they also have the lowest number of new jobs and kind of internal mobility options provided to them. And that really starts painting, you know, painting a picture that you know, if we want to retain our finance talent, we probably need to start giving them uh, the ability to kind of progress in their career at Acme rather than have to look outside of the company. Because a lot of the times, uh, turnover and retention, it's not a cause of wanting more pay. It's not a cause of wanting to go to a new company. It's just because you don't see a clear progression in your career at your company. And it also points out something, Alex, that uh, this is not a problem that you in communications alone are going to be able exactly. to solve. You need to partner with the HR people. You need to partner with the leaders in finance to be able to address what is really a business issue. Um, so uh, we've, we've learned in the last few months that communications has been playing a more integral role, a seat at the table. Um, and it's all about partnership. You, know, you don't yep. have to... Um, in the past, I think we all had to feel as if the entire weight of the organization was on our shoulders and we needed to communicate the everything. And the answer is right. no, but you need to help empower people to do the communication that needs to take place to be able to address those business issues that are affecting an organization, whether it's the, uh, you know, the quality of the product that's being shipped out the door and defect rates that are way too high, or whether it's in... Uh, finance, it might be something like turnover. It might be the day sales outstanding numbers need to be addressed. We can, in communications, come in and um, use communications as a tool. We can stay on top of things. We can help them accomplish their business goals. And it's not just about the, oh, here's the corporate strategy that everybody better understand. It's the really doing both. It's providing some of that big picture information that people need to know to figure out where the entire organization is going and do people really get that? And then it's also at that micro level, what are their jobs? How are they doing? Do they have information that they need to be able to um, accomplish their individual roles? And we serve a purpose sort of all along that spectrum from the macro to the micro. Exactly. It's, and I think, you know, again, the, the, I, and the, the concept here, which is talent retention, begins like imagine as an internal communicator being able to walk into that kind of that ex like executive level stakeholder meeting and show exactly through data visualization through whatever kind of 
numbers or metrics you have on hand be able to show that look we have an issue here we're not doing enough here here's how we need to here's how we can solve it and being that you know talent retention is always going to be something that's going to be mo moving the needle within organizations so yeah and i yeah. think that the other piece that is, is so closely related to that i think oftentimes as communications people were in a defensive position trying to say here's what it is that we do and proving that what we do makes a difference i think it's better if we can go in and and sort of say we understand what it is that you're trying to accomplish and let me show you how communications can help you achieve your goals as opposed to here's my set of goals and here's yep. what communications does so let's be better partners with the rest of the organization in doing things that only we can do but helping them do the things that in a sense only they can do and they have control over exactly so you know you start becoming everybody's friend now you know i'm going to help you achieve your goals and it, that that totally changes the conversation mm -hmm. um i think again the key takeaway here is regardless of what you're measuring regardless of what you're looking at the idea is always to kind of set that baseline understand where you are currently and what you want to achieve so in this case against again the finance team was accounting for 56 actually i think it was 54 percent of offboarding but uh, um regardless the goal would be to lower that rate closer to the other teams kind of get it in line with other teams so bring that around to around 20 percent and the actionable insight here again the thing that you can take to the board meeting the take the thing that you can take forward and kind of start aligning your communications around is that you need to work with internal stakeholders to provide more options for internal mobility for the finance team and that will help you bring down that offboarding uh right yeah. and the only thing i would add is on the achievable goal if we wanted to throw in the by such and such a date or over the next x number of months right that's the kind of things that makes it yeah. um, time bound and a true smart goal that you're going to want to do um but the good is we always do deadlines anyway we meet our deadlines as communications people so the, the time aspect of goals is uh something we've got nailed uh, yeah, there's actually, I think there's a question, um, there's a question earlier about uh, uh, what kind of timeline you should be, you should be looking at when doing measurement, like what's an idea, what, what do you think is a good kind of frame to work with when you're looking towards making an improvement on some key well, goal? And it gets back to a little bit about what we said before, sometimes it's a pre and post. Right. Um, and it depends on how long the campaign is and how complex and, and how many people you need to reach. It can be very, very short term. It could be you know, a, a month long thing where you measure it this and you measure it that. Um, I actually did some survey work when I was at Hitachi um, around a, I'll call it change management. It was a move, a physical relocation of employees from one facility to another. And we did some baseline measures that we did that like a year before the move actually takes place and then we didn't um, have our follow-up metrics until long after so it was like a year and a half afterwards on the pre-post and the audience makeup actually changed during the time we did that um, but you're also going to be doing some measurement all along if your hr department for example runs a satisfaction engagement survey and they're doing it once a year you're going to see that why don't you go in and find out what questions are the key drivers, the KPIs that are buried in that, and then find ways to include those in the measures that you do maybe once a quarter following the town hall. Maybe you, if you do a quarterly town hall meeting or some results thing that's finance driven, you know, um, do a survey that finds out how effective was that meeting, the information that was conveyed, but then ask some questions that uh, you want to sort of be doing the pulse survey all along on. The other thing is that uh, we often feel as if we have to do the survey across all of the uh, you mm -hmm. know, organization at once. There are ways that you can go in and ask a smaller subset, um, doing some effective yeah. random sampling so that you're not sending out the survey to all 10,000 employees or all 1,000. You know, if you understand sampling and how it works, you know how many people you need to know to come up with what confidence level on the data that you're going to get back out of it. But uh, I would say one measure all along, especially for these things that are tracking trends over time, and then drop in and do something sort of that pre post. Um, we did it once before we launched a new channel. 
we wanted to find out whether a video magazine would have a tremendous impact on an audience or not. We put together a pilot video and we had a control group that we asked a series of questions, I don't know, 10 questions that dealt with topics that were in this pilot video. You know, what do you think about this, that, and the other? And we asked them a set of questions. We took a, a test group and what we did there was we showed them the video and then we asked them the question. So the, the, the right. only difference between those two groups was some saw the video after they answered questions, the other saw the video and then they answered the questions. So we were measuring what impact does that video have on people's ability to understand a certain topic. Um, that's a, a great way to be able to go in and say, you know, look, without the video, people had this level of understanding. With the video, they had this level of understanding. This is the return on that investment if we go ahead with the pilot and roll this thing out on a regular basis. So great ways to be able to make your case. Right, exactly. Uh, I think, you know, before we move on to our closing remarks, I wanted to highlight one more time that, of course, the your ability to kind of track against a goal is, or like your ability to improve against a goal is only as good as you are at measuring kind of following up on your progress uh, mm -hmm. on that goal. So being, whether it's Workforce Insights, whether it's, you know, any other platform you're using, checking, you know, checking up on that metric, or, you know, in this case, with Workforce Insights, being instantly notified whenever there's a change uh, in your numbers. That'll really kind of help you see if you're moving against that established baseline. But we've covered a lot of stuff here today, um, from, from metrics to tactics to kind of various ways you can approach the subject, but we do have kind of a key takeaways list. I think, Brad, you, you collated this and, and, and we're, the, we're the director, but I think that uh, above all, I think one of the things that clearly, at least for me, all these conversations we had, all these meetings, all these, you know, uh, strategizing about how to run the session, the thing that kept being up, it, there, there are actually two things that popped up to me always establishing a baseline. Whatever you're doing, just always understand where you are when you start off, because that's the only way you'll know if you're making progress. It goes for any measurement, uh, whether, you're, whether you're measuring communications or marketing efforts or whether you're you know, trying to, to lose weight. Uh, it's always establish a baseline and understand how you're moving against it. But also measuring what matters. That's a big thing for me. Something that you said also is, making sure you understand what keeps your executives up at night. What, how can you help them solve their issues? How can you help other departments solve their issues? How can you become everybody's friend and kind of play into that? That's what you need to measure and that's what you need to be able to, to improve against. Yeah, and I think if, if I had two that I'd love to hammer home on is there has been a, a cry to move up that uh, metrics ladder to say, oh, the ones that really are important are the outcomes, the business ones. And I would sort of counter to say, those are mo probably the most powerful in terms of proving to the organization that you're helping the organization move. But to get there, you need to be doing all three, the outputs, the outtakes, and the outcomes. So it's not a case of don't do that, do this one instead. It's do all three or have a command of all three and know which ones to help move things along. And then the other piece is data visualization, storytelling. How can you compress what is a very, very complex topic into something that is very, very digestible, understandable, that when you show numbers in a graphic format to somebody and walk them through the story, they get it instantly. Because quite honestly, a lot of numbers, uh, spreadsheets, even graphs can be daunting. And you need to be able to pull on those storytelling skills that you have as a communications person to be able to tell a story, not with words, but with data, with the numbers, because it is compelling. And it's um, the kind of stuff that much of our audiences and organizations can relate to. Uh, we do have that finance crowd. We do have the sales crowd. That, yeah. They're all numbers driven. We need to be as comfortable telling stories with numbers as we are with words. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, I think, you know, what, whatever, and, and that's not necessarily something that we as communicators have been, you know, necessarily comfortable with. You said that, you, you know, in your previous life, you or uh, previous roles, you, uh, you befriended statisticians. 
uh, to, 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 to help with your making your point visual and, and, and kind of the data impact, showing the data impact. Yeah, um, you don't have to. I mean, I took a class in stats when I had to um, mm -hmm. for my MBA program. And I'm also thankful that I don't do statistics every single day as a job because I find it much less interesting than working with people. And uh, so, yeah. you know, it, again, it, you don't have to do all of this stuff yourself, but you do have to have that curiosity. Uh, the other thing I guess I would toss at people is find ways to go out and study this stuff, you know, take a class, you know, sign up for workshops, ask those great questions. And sometimes it needs to be one on one because the other piece is just like communications is not a one size fits all thing. I think you're going to find that measurement and metrics have to be tailored to the individual. So while um, you know we threw this fictitious Acme crowd at you and we tried to show right. you, oh, I did this over Cisco, I did this at HP, you know, that, it is very, very personal. Um, we really need to know what it is that uh, the organization is facing, what are the audiences across the organization, what are the things that move, and, and it varies so much from this crowd to that crowd to that crowd. Even within a large organization, you can have tremendous variation. So um, get used to the, it isn't, a blanket response. There is not one answer about, oh, you need to measure this and share it with your senior leaders. Yeah. It's, you need to find the ones that are key to your organization. Exactly. But hopefully we kind of gave some ideas here today on what you can start start looking at in your measurement practices. Yeah. Um, we're at the top of the hour. I did want to mention that, of course, uh, something that even we talked about today, we talked about utilizing video communications. I feel like there's no way to get around uh, using uh, talking about video communications in internal communications these days. So we're actually going to be running a session next month dedicated specifically to that. So I'm going to put up a, a, a link now to that new session. Don't worry. If you click on it, you won't be led away. You'll still hear our closing remarks. Um, but yeah, that should be really fun. Uh, me, Jonathan, Andrea, and Marielle are going to be covering some pretty cool use cases for uh, or five hacks on how to use internal or video to communicate with your employees. But with that, I'd like to thank everybody that joined us for today. We didn't get to all the questions in the chat. I tried to answer as many of them as I could. We brought some of them up during the session. Uh, we hope you all enjoyed. Uh, Brad, Thank you so much for, for sharing your wisdom with us today. Uh, I hope you're, the fire apparently didn't reach your home yet. Uh, no. you're, you're still, <laughs> I can't see flames coming through. Um, no. any, last, any last words of wisdom uh, well, regarding uh, yeah, anything? I, you can see my email up there. You can see Alex's email up there. If you do have follow-up questions and want to dive a little bit deeper, reach out to us. Um, I love helping others think through measurement and metrics and questions because i think the other piece that i've always said is that when you crawl into somebody else's head when you start understanding their issues it makes you a better problem solver no matter what so i uh, welcome the opportunity to if you got a question specifically I, hey i'm facing this what do you think i should do about that let's have a conversation because i think that's what it's all about or you know if you saw something today with the workforce insights and want to know a little bit more about it you know reach out to alex um, you get a chance to sneak preview things, and then you're going to be seeing this announcement next week when it's officially launched. But you know, how can these tools become you know an ally uh, of something that you're putting in your quiver of arrows there to be able to go out and tackle this um, increasingly important topic of being able to show that you add value? What is the return from an investment in internal communications? And we didn't even get into measuring ROI. Um, which yeah. maybe we'll do that in another workshop a little bit later on. The next one. There you go. I have my idea for the next one. Um, with that, thank you again, everybody. Uh, stay safe out there. And yeah, we look forward to seeing everybody at the next one. Thanks. Bye. Bye, all.